Welcome back to the channel. We are Roundup Toys. We do everything to do with Toy Story. So today we are doing this DIY tutorial of how to make this hockey puck toy. Stay with us and if you've got a minute, just comment, like and subscribe. Just a quick overview of everything that we've got here, some of the bits that are pre-built and how we're gonna make them. So this is a Trixie's puck. These are cheap, these are on eBay. I think I paid like two pound for these. Most people are buying them in lots of 10. They're extremely cheap. The cheaper, the better. For the simple reason is they lack branding. So you don't want big brand names all over this thing. You just want them cheap. Now we're gonna start by drilling the holes through the actual puck itself. This is to melt the hands. Now, we're gonna be using a, a cable, which we're gonna come back to in a moment. Now, I suggest stepping these drill bits up in size. So, almost start with a smaller one and then going up, going up. Obviously, if you're a child watching this, get an adult to take over and do this bit, because, yeah, you can hurt yourself. Um, it is rubber, it is extremely messy, but most people go for it straight through, which gives the toy itself, this sort of very open-handed, happy expression. I personally like the sad expression that you see from the actual movie with his hands down, and this is what I was aiming for. So we sort of had to change halfway through this project to make him sadder, and that's really what I wanted out of this particular toy. Now we're just taking that cable and just feeding it through. Now, if you're making the happy toy with his arms sort of at nine and three, this is the way to do it. Bit of cable, we'll go back to that in a moment and show you what we've done with that. But actually just push it all the way through and that will allow you to get that sort of happiness. I've started to chisel out the corners there to allow them to pull down before we opted for a second puck. But this sort of shows you where the difference in, in the toy that you're gonna be making and which one you wanna make. This is that power lead we were talking about. This is just a computer kettle lead, a cheap computer kettle lead. Chop them up. They're to a penny. So you are going to have to lose a set of Mr. Potato Head arms for this project. These toys are cheap. They're like eight pounds or something brand new. They're made by Play School. You can get them everywhere, but they do lend themselves very well to this. Now, this is one of the hands we've done earlier. So you can sort of see how well they're going to line up for what we're doing. And they really give the right effect. So literally both sets of hands. Now, what we're going to do is actually cut them off just above the wrist line. Now you're gonna to wanna to leave that bit of material there because almost where the gloves on. Now that allows you to drill down into them. Now if you wanted a slightly thicker one, you could use a Mrs. Potato Head. She has got slightly thicker wrists. So that allows a little bit more material there if you feel it's needed just on that glove area there. It's entirely up to you, both do work. You just, if you're using Mr. Potato Head hands, you have to be a little, little bit more delicate. Now, again, if you're a child, you're gonna to need to pass this over to an adult to do, but we're just gonna use a rotary tool and just buzz the actual hand off. You could cut them with a blade. Either way, you just clean them up, discard the arm, and you're just left with the hands. That's all you're gonna need. Now, all we're gonna do with these is drill a pilot hole. You've gotta be very careful not to come out of the actual hand itself, but drill a pilot hole down the very center of the actual glove itself. Now this is so we can mount the arms. I wanted, as I say, and I keep going back to, I wanted them playable. And to do this, we need them secure. We don't need them craft-like. So keep the drill very, very slow. Make sure it's away from your hand. I know my hand looks like it's close. <laughs> we are running these very slow for, for that reason. And just step up these drill bits. And you're just stepping up size by size. You don't want to go too quick all at once. Measure your cable. I think ours, we ended up with a seven mil drill bit at the very end. And that allowed our cable to go in, which was about eight mil. You want to keep it very tight for that very reason. Obviously too baggy, they're going to keep falling off. Now you can see the hockey pucks. We're going to come back to how to make those in a moment, but this is just going to give you a brief sort of overview of how this is going to be assembled. Now, this is our electrical cable we're talking about. So we're UK, so this is three core cables, just basic. All you can do is literally push it straight down into that potato head's hand. Now, you might have to use boiling water to actually soften the hand up sometimes to allow it to go in, but just 
make sure you don't oversize it. And this is how they're sort of put together. So you literally just push that piece of cable all the way through the toy or the puck rather at this point, and then just mount the amber hand on the other side. Nice and straightforward. Now, as you progress and we go to final assembly, I would suggest gluing everything with Tiger Seal. There's a, a product out there called U-Pole Tiger Seal. That stuff is a polyurethane adhesive. It is ridiculous and it does hold everything together very well and it will keep the gaps out of this as well. So it stops the hands sort of sliding backwards and forwards. And likewise, just stop hands dropping off and stuff like that. It is black in color. Body shops tend to use it for cars, for sticking bits of body work on and stuff like that. So it's very, very strong and it works very well, but it is very messy. So make sure you wear gloves and everything. But you can sort of see what we're going for here. Now for the gloves, we're gonna use a sunshine yellow plastic coat fast dry enamel. The reason we've opted for enamel is because it dries very glossy, it's very easy to work with, and it does stick to these very, very well. It doesn't rub off, it doesn't fall off, you haven't got to, got to lacquer it. Now, this is just a sacrificial piece of cable that I've used there. You just pull them back off and then remount them to a new bit. You've probably got two meters of lead or whatever anyway. This was on our Mark II puck, so what we ended up doing there was actually separating the hands. This is the bit where it gets a little bit more complicated. We're 3D printing the actual hockey pucks that go on there. Now, it could have been done out of clay, it could have been done out of foam. There's so many things you can do it out of, and I'm not taking away from anybody who's done it like that. I just wanted this as strong and as hard as it could be, and this was the only way I could think to do it. I'm gonna share my 3D print files for it. So by all means, if you've got access to one, brilliant. You can print out exactly what we printed out here and start making them exactly the same. What I would suggest is making a few of them. Um, for the simple reasons, there's gonna be mistakes. The finishes aren't gonna be as good as they should be on some of them. And you can almost opt for the best ones. It allows you to make a mistake every now and again. 3D printing is cheap. Um, they're not expensive at all. So I would definitely, definitely look that way to to making as many as you can so you have, don't have to keep stopping and remaking. Once I stop printing, literally you can just peel them off. You've got a choice of materials. You can use PLA, you can use ABS. Personally, the cheaper printers I find PLA does print better. Um, it's just an easy material to work with. So yeah, nice and easy, print them off. They're not gonna give you a perfect finish, but this is what I mean. So I've printed off five in this particular sort of run that I was doing. Now I'm not gonna use in all of these obviously. Now, what I would say is sand them down. So sand off obviously the top coat, smooth them down as much as you can. And then afterwards we're gonna prime them, but we're gonna use a high build primer. So again, there's like a body shop primer out there called, I think it's U-Pole high build primer. This is what we've used on these white ones here. The red one in the middle has already been painted, but it just gives you an idea that you can fill that in. If you decided to use ABS, there is methods there to smooth them off without using sort of primers and fillers and stuff like that. We've been using this Insignia Red Plastic Coat Fast Dry Enamel. That's really good and gives a really nice clean finish. You don't need a, a lacquer. This is what we were saying with, with the same with the gloves. It sticks very well, gives you a really nice shine. We're gonna mount that with this tape. So this is actually just number plate tape. It's a two inch number plate tape. We're gonna show you the brand that we've been using just here. So it's a company called Sticky Tapes. You can order from them online. It's just good stuff to have about. Now all I want you to do is stick it down and use a single edge blade. A lot of people use Stanley knives and you're just gonna whiz around and cut it out. So as you can see, now we've cut that out. That is on the back. This stuff is so strong. It is really strong, but again, get an adult to do it if you're not honestly the, the danger of cutting these is ridiculous and paint the bits that you've been doing because you might scratch around the edges honestly the amount of these that i've scratched when i've been trying to do these is ridiculous it's just easier than keep repainting them now this bit of masking tape i've put across that's really just an alignment so that aligns your two armholes regardless of what angle you're putting these in at I suggest doing this because at least that way from the front, when you're mounting it and sticking it, you've got a point of reference. It's so easy to get those when they're sort of off kilter. You think it's right and it's just not. So once they're on, 
you can mount this. So this is puck number one. So obviously that the, the arms going through that gives him his happy expression. Now the split arms there that we're using, that's the one that I was using to give him that sad expression that we were speaking about. So these arms here, as you can see, they taper up at a different angle. So they really sort of push them down. There's a reason it just works so much cleaner because of this. Now, once you get them in and they're tight, I would suggest, as I say, that Tiger Seal that we spoke of, that is such a good product and it just seals everything up really tight. And you can get those hands on there. You can get those wires obviously mounted into the actual puck. Once they're stuck down, none of this is coming off. That is literally a permanent seal from what we're doing there. Um, it's fantastic. There's a couple of pairs of boots I've been playing with. This has been an issue for me. So I'm trying to adapt to different toys. I've tried making them out of clay. I've tried 3D printing them. None of which to date I've been happy with. There is gonna be a second part to this tutorial. As soon as I've found where I'm happy with doing these boots, I don't wanna sort of half do them. I want this as like a very accurate, playable toy not something with clay feet that's going to break up or display only piece but you can see how cool it is sat there next to woody it just makes such a lovely toy honestly if you've got any ideas or you start making one and you make feet let us know drop us a comment please like share you like it dislike it thumbs up thumbs down please do that and post a comment thank you